Graham, I'm going to start with you. Um, what do you feel like these last couple of months of recruiting and getting to this day, what have you learned about the program and the direction of it as you've gone through this process? Well, it's been a fun process, you know, evaluating the current players. Um, also, trying to, we, when we first got hired, we were right in the middle of who they were already getting ready to sign. So just being able to evaluate that first class or that first group that we signed back in December. And then, you know, getting back on the recruiting, recruiting trail in January is big. And uh, the reality is BYU has a great name out there right now. We can get in on some big time guys. And I look forward to the recruiting battles of the future. So I think we're in a good spot. We had, we had some holes we needed to fill. I think we've done a pretty good job of addressing that. And then, you know, as things progress forward, we'll continue to look at other areas we need to, to get better at. Yeah, Coach uh, Roderick, I had a question about recruiting quarterbacks. You grabbed a high school quarterback, Juco quarterback, and a transfer portal quarterback. How do you go about balancing the short-term and long-term benefits of the different types of quarterbacks? Well, um, the, the first, first, um, first priority is always just the season that's right in front of you. You know, we want to make sure we have a, a win now mentality at quarterback. So. Um, we felt like, you know, going after a player like Keaton Slovis, you know, he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the country the last few years in college football. And so we, we felt like we needed to get at least one guy who's a proven guy who's played at this level and played at a high level. And uh, so that's sort of the immediate future. Um, and then Jake Retzloff is a guy who has done a great job in junior college. He was, in my opinion, the best quarterback in, in junior college the last two years. And so, again, we get another guy who uh, hasn't played yet at this level, but has the ability, uh, has shown the ability to play at a high level. And then we've got a couple of good players in our room already. Um, so you get those two, you get those guys in the room together, gives you a chance to, you know, be ready for this year. And then um, Ryder Burton, we're really excited about him. Um, big arm, I mean, he, he can really throw it. and. Um, you know he's gonna probably gonna take a little time to learn everything, um, but very excited about him as well. Mitch and then Jake. This question's for uh, Coach Hill, Jay. Uh, when you took the job as, as the de defensive coordinator, were there certain positions that you identified uh, that you felt were pressing needs to right away when you when you took the job, or was it more about? just finding athletes that had measurables and, and just the size and the look of, of P5 talent? Yeah, I think it's both. Um, I felt like we needed to really sure up the interior of our defensive line. So that's uh, where we did take a couple players. And then the reality is we're never going to turn down a big time guy. I don't care if we have enough scholarships already used at that spot. We'll never turn down a big time guy. So the rest of the people we're looking at right now are those guys, the ones that fit the mold of power five guys that can compete in the Big 12. This question's for Coach Papinga. Coach, you brought uh, two guys you were affiliated with up there at Boise State and Isaiah Banya and Jackson Cravens. They both transferred to BYU. What do they offer, in your opinion, to this defensive line slash linebacking core? Yeah, I'll start with Jackson. I just, I was always impressed with Jackson. He just, great work ethic tough physical guy that just worked you know he didn't say he didn't say much yeah. he just put his head down and he went to work and so I thought you know he was somebody that I think would fit in here really really well and so when his uh, name came up in the portal you know that was somebody that I mentioned immediately just because I, I just liked his mindset man I think he could be able to fit in anywhere um, and then with Isaiah he's a dynamic guy he can um, you know, he's got great length. I think there's a lot of things he can do. He's pretty versatile. Uh, you know, he can play on the edge. I do think he can play as a stack backer as well. Um, but uh, just being able to get a dynamic guy on the edge that can rush the passer and also be able to set the edge of the defense is something that's, that he's proven to do at a high level the last couple of years at uh, Boise State that I thought would fit in well to this scheme. Sean and then Jay. Yeah, Coach Arod, I'm, I'm really intrigued a little bit by the, I guess, official signing and, and commitment, the flip that you guys got today from uh, the running back out of El Paso, LJ Martin. Yeah. Can you kind of 
just sort of describe a little bit his recruitment and, and I guess the, the main question I'm kind of looking for is who do we uh, owe the credit for for working a little bit of magic from a guy who was <laughs> rec who was committed several other times, including to a future conference rival before. Uh, yeah, so interesting story. I guess I guess it's okay to share this. He actually signed with us back in December on the early signing day, and we've managed to keep it a secret uh, the whole time. He asked us to do that. He wanted to wait. Uh, he's a really, really awesome kid who uh, felt, he said he really felt indebted to the community, his school, all the people in his school. Uh, a, a kid s signing with the Power 5 program is a big deal there, and he wanted it to be uh, a special event today where he thanked and included everybody in the community and in the school. And so we've been hanging on to that for a while. Obviously, I, I would have loved to have announced it a month ago. Um, but... Um, so the way we got in on LJ was, you know, he was committed to Stanford forever, and then with the coaching change that happened at Stanford, um, he showed some interest and uh, probably didn't hurt that we ran the ball pretty well in that last game against those guys, and he was aware of that and sort of aware of what we've done on offense the last couple of years with our running backs, our run game. And um, then he's just a great fit. He's a high character, high academic standards guy. And... Um, his recruitment was a, a team effort. Our, our whole staff got involved right away. Uh, recruited. He's got great parents. We recruited them as, just as hard as we did him, and um, we're super excited about him. Yeah, this question is for any of the three or all of the three uh, coordinators. Do you guys feel like this roster, as it is constituted now, is ready to to go into a Power Five conference and compete favorably? Uh, defensively speaking, no, not yet. We got a long ways to go. Based on the film that I've seen, we got to continue to de develop guys better, um, which is always the case in January, right, or February, that we got to develop guys that are currently here. We got to continue to look for uh, other guys to add to the roster. Um, that doesn't mean we don't love the guys that we currently have, but we're always looking to improve, and that will always be the case no matter what year you ask that question to me. Jay, my response to that would be, I, th I think we have, uh, you know, you never, you're never going to say, we've arrived, we're ready. <laughs> you know, so I have a lot of confidence that we're, we're going to go into this, this conference and play well on offense. Um, and we have some scholarships still available on offense, and we're going to keep recruiting to get better every day. We're, we're, that's never going to end. And um, so I think we're, I, I, hate to, I hate to say we're ready. You know, I, it just sounds like, um, but we're excited about this challenge, and we have a lot of confidence that we're going to go in this league and, and uh, be competitive. Yeah, Jay, I would say, you know, just talking special teams-wise, like we still got to find, you know, a dynamic returner. I think that's always a key, you know, especially playing at the high level. So being able to find a guy, you know, in our kick game that can be able to just change the game in one play. So we'll, uh, we'll be evaluating that through spring ball and then just being able to get a, con a kicker that's consistent that could put the ball through the upright. So being able to find somebody over these next months that can do that as well. But I feel very confident in our punter, very confident in the snappers. Um, and I think we got a roster that's full of guys that can, uh, that can run and tackle and block. And you know, that's what I think you got to do on uh, special teams to be, to be competitive. So just a couple spots here and there to fill, but I feel like we'll get those by the time we get to August. Kelly, yeah, is, is Rico coming back? We, we haven't really heard anything official from him. Uh, Ryan? Ryan, yeah. Yeah, yep, he's here. He, okay. Yep, he's here, ready to roll. Yeah, he's doing great. Jared, go ahead. Kelly, this question's for you. You've sold this program when it was independent, and now returning and being able to sell it as a Big 12 program as you've worked with the, the recruits during the, this process. How different was it for you? What was your experience like? Yeah, I think, you know, Jay already kind of mentioned it already, but just being out on the road in December and January, for me, a different, way different reception than what I was getting, you know, seven years ago when I was here when we were kind of in the middle of being independent. And just, yeah, everybody wants to play power. You know, the top guys in the country, they want to play power five football, bottom line. No matter, you know, however we tried to spin the independence thing, it's just you were still independent. And now being able to be in a big time conference and, yeah, you guys saw the schedule yesterday, week in and week out. You know, the teams that we're going to be playing, the guys see that and they're fired up. Being able to send that um, schedule out yesterday to all the recruits, I mean, th those dudes were fired up to, you know, potentially be a part of something like this. And so um, I think it's just, it's a complete game changer in my opinion. And, 
yeah, it's something that obviously we'll have going forward. We'll take the last two questions from Mitch and then Jake. I wanted to follow up from uh, my earlier question with Coach Hill. Uh, you noted that the interior defensive line was an area of focus. I'm curious, what, what type of uh, defensive front are, are you envisioning is the, the foundation of this defense? Uh, four, four man front or three? What, what's that kind of going to look like? You, how do you envision the defense looking uh, when it comes together? So we have the ability in our scheme to do both, four down and three down. Um, the bigger the offense gets, the bigger we'll get on defense. So if they're going to play us in 21 and 12 or even 22 personnel, those kind of groups, then you'll see us mainly in four down fronts. And my, my comment, we need some guys like Kyrus Tonga. Or, and we, we, we very well could have those players here, but we need those guys to step up and play like that, to that caliber. Um, and that's why that became such a focus, because you, you can't just get pushed off the ball. you got to have... Uh, the, the guys to be able to stop that because that's where that's where it all starts up from for us. It's questions for A Rod uh, with Jaron Puka and Blake down there at the Senior Bowl. How big is that to have those guys representing on that stage for you? I guess you, Coach Hill and Papinga, you can hop in on this as well. But how big is that for you guys in recruiting to be able to point to those guys and say they've come through this program and now they're headed to the NFL? Yeah, it's great. Um, we're proud of those guys. Um, really happy for them, the success they're having, and can't wait to see where they end up. And of course, every every time you have a player move on and have success um, at the next level, it just adds to um, our ability to attract more good players to come play here. And um, just give you an example, Keaton Slovis. The reason he wanted to be here is he knows he knows Jaron. He knows Zach knows those guys personally. He's worked out with them before. And um, he knew about the success they've had in this offense. And he wanted to play in this offense. And that meant more to him than uh, you know other places and NIL money and all the other stuff out there was he wanted to play in, in an offense where uh, those quarterbacks had, had had success. And so I think you know the more we can say, hey, these old linemen have moved on, these receivers have moved on, the more it gives us a chance to attract more good players like them. Great, thank you to all three of you for joining us this morning. Let's go. All right, thank you.